Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, I mean, funny enough, uh, we are after the beautiful uh, five tips for playful lighting. Uh, so I need to bring you back to the basic, really, really basic. <laughs> so aesthetic of light and social inequality. Uh, if you know the work we are doing, you know that we work a lot on social inequality through lighting, addressed by lighting. Uh, but this, today I want to speak about a subject that is obsessing me. Uh, therefore, I will obsess you. <laughs> that is aesthetic of light and social inequality. Uh, what do I mean by aesthetic of light? If uh, we remember, or if we look, look around to, I mean, social housing in general, in Europe, across Europe, but I mean, US is more or less the same, and I'm sure that uh, Asia is very similar, uh, you'll see that, I mean, uh, social housing blocks, I mean, Speaking beyond architecture, so yes, they are big blocks, okay? Uh, but speaking about lighting, lighting is obviously, as you can see, uh, super bright or uh, super contrasty uh, or uh, even in new projects, because here there are some new projects uh, in Vienna, in London, in Sweden. Um, the last one is Thamesmith, that is a place we are working on at the moment. Uh, you see that the lighting has an aesthetic, or not aesthetic, I would say, uh, but quite a common language, okay, <laughs> that links everything. Um, and it's not just about the lighting effect in reality. I mean, this is amazingly a very, very new project that has been published as one of the most beautiful projects on social housing recently uh, in Stockholm, uh, the area had a lot of negative attention before. Uh, it was defined as a not-to-go not zone. Uh, and basically, what they're saying in the article is saying, a simple, cost-effective, yet quite brilliant solution uh, has turned this dark spot into a glowing landmark and a much nicer area to live in. Okay, uh, first, I would like to ask the residents if it's a much nicer area. Secondly, I don't know, I mean, if you are a lighting designer or even if you live in a normal place, I'm sure you wouldn't like this kind of light. Hmm? I'm sure that in your house, on, on your balcony, you don't have this kind of light. Hmm? This light is really social housing lighting. And it's incredible that if you Google it, okay, you have this language, this aesthetic of lighting targeted on social housing. I, I found quite <laughs> incredible. And yeah, if you Google it, okay, there's uh, companies, manufacturers that ad are advertising social housing lighting specifically. Eh? Uh, so it's advertising, okay? It's not a bad example, it's advertising. And you say communal lighting for social housing. And you have this picture of this block as one of the good examples of lighting. And, and then you receive this leaflet. I mean, we work a lot on social housing, therefore I always receive these leaflets with the, oh, this is for you, social housing lighting. And, and you, I just receive bulkhead, you know, <laughs> like, and I say, I don't, I don't use those. I don't want to use those. Uh, and why? I mean, I have a catalog that is saying social housing lighting. And in the social housing lighting catalog, you just find this kind of fixture. Yes, they are very robust, okay? But I'm quite sure, again, no one would use this <laughs> in their own environment, in their own house, in their own courtyards. So why should we use this on social housing? <laughs> That's my question. It's a kind of a provocation, okay? So just think about it. Uh, I mean, of course, I mean, when you do lighting design for social housing, uh, you need to pay attention to some other things. For sure, robustness is one thing, uh, and uh, maintenance and uh, long life uh, fixture. Say that, I'm quite sure that on the market, we can find products that are not looking like this. So when I'm speaking about aesthetic of lights, I really speak about also aesthetic of lighting fixture. So it's not just the lighting effect, but really the fixture itself. And can we change this attitude? 
uh, I'm here to say that, I mean, also to product designer, the manufacturer, that there's a bit of a gap in the market for this kind of products. So we have very, very cool high-end uh, high residential products. Uh, we have plenty of interior products that we don't even know what to do about with them anymore because you can find anything. Uh, but for outdoor and for outdoor, for this kind of place, we just have, yeah, the fixture we, show we saw before. Um, we did one project that we are very proud of uh, because, uh, I mean, we try, at least we try, to change a bit the attitude. We try to change the mindset of uh, the client, uh, the engineer working with us, because we were working on the social housing estates in Shadwell, here in London. Uh, it's a, uh, an estate by Peabody, so it's uh, one of the largest uh, um, social housing uh, developers and uh, manager, manager in, in London. They have a kind of 2,000 social housing estates. Uh, and as usual, I mean, social housing, if you, if you walk through London, you see there's like big, massive bulkheads, super bright, um, and uh, street lighting. Uh, I don't have a picture because they already dismantled everything of when we, we start the project, uh, but you see that there's like massive sodium street lighting <laughs> attached to the balcony that was lighting up the courtyard. Of course, in a very uniform way, uh, for sure. I mean, it's street lighting on, on a courtyard. Um, we changed that. Uh, of course, I mean, it's not just lighting. Eh? I mean, I know that lighting cannot do a miracle. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a regeneration project, including landscape and, I mean, everything. But uh, we took a different approach on lighting because we were called in to replace the existing lighting uh, with the new bulkheads or, you know, new or better street lighting optics. And we say, well, why we don't try something a bit different? Why we don't try? because it's a very, very beautiful estate, and is, uh, the, the landscape project was very nice. Why won't they try just to, to do as a normal place, you know, like a, like a residential <laughs> development, like the one that you have around London? Um, and, and we did. I mean, and we, we changed. I mean, we had to fight a lot with the engineers, uh, because, of course, this is more difficult to maintain. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> I mean, for them is uh, still quite a problem to uh, understand in terms of control. But, I mean, it's definitely different from before. And uh, it was, funnily enough, I mean, people in the area, because it's uh, an area where there's a lot, lot of social housing uh, that are lit as the one that we saw previously, uh, people are just going there to sit there because it's more pleasant. Oh, really? So instead of having, like, you know, a, a very uh, badly lit social housing in states where all the crimes are happening because uh, it's what is happening, uh, now people are going there, I mean, gathering there to sit and to have a chat. Uh, so that's quite nice. You see that we use very simple stuff. I mean, like, nothing crazy, nothing, uh, you know, not uh, RGB, nothing moving, nothing, nothing, very, very basic. I mean, bench lighting, applied to trees, a little catenary in the courtyard, but nothing incredible and unthinkable, just normal lighting. And uh, again, I mean, imagine that each of these doors had a super bright bulkhead on the top, so it was spreading lights all over and not on the, on the door itself. And we just changed that with uh, this uh, a little light, wall lights. Hmm? Um, and yeah, the feeling is that the people are feeling rich because it's like, it looks like another uh, development in London, and like a normal one. Uh, funnily enough, we had also some negative comments saying, oh, it looks like Mayfair, we don't need that. But <laughs> okay, I mean, everyone has his own opinion. <laughs> and kids can play because, of course, it's quite handy. The courtyard is facing, is interior facing, so all the, all the moms can stay at the balcony and kids can play even later in the dark. Uh, what we didn't manage, because, of course, I mean, we want one battle, but not the entire fight, <laughs> is that in this court, we, we, we had two courtyards, but in this courtyard particularly, uh, if you see, 
uh, I mean, all the balconies are lit with bulkheads, okay? Uh, there are few on in this picture because we tried to switch them on at all, but we couldn't because they are on, uh, on battery. <laughs> so you cannot even switch them off ever, even if you want one day to switch them off, you can't. <laughs> Uh, we, we switched some of them because they were broken. <laughs> so the one that they're, they were working there, one there were this one, and uh, the fact is that during the evening, if you real if you see the real picture of this place, is this one. So basically, our lighting in the courtyard, I mean, it's killed, is overkilled by the balkans. Okay, <laughs> it's like. Not really, not really useful. But what we say is say, okay, let's plan and let's design as in the future. We could maybe remove these bulkheads and do something different, okay? And, uh, and the funny thing is that we couldn't change the bulkheads because they were new. Brand new, LED, super bright uh, bulkheads that they cost a fortune. I mean, I don't know if you're aware of the price, of bulkheads, because they come up to 250 pounds each. So it's not a question of budget, it's not a question of price, it's a question of mindset. And I'm here to, to ask, can we change that if you have a project like this, or can we uh, speak about that? Can we try to do something different? Okay, uh, this is a topic for lighting designer, I think. Thank you very much. <laughs>